Sacred Heart is proud to sponsor Pensacola Histories in recognition of the Daughters of Charity who brought their mission of care to Pensacola over 90 years ago. Hello and welcome to our continuing series of stories about Pensacola, North America's first place city. And today we continue with one of the biographies of the men who really helped make Pensacola a great community. And today we want to talk about Colonel William Henry Chase. Uh, Chase was from New York, a West Point graduate, and after his, uh, his uh, graduation from there, he was in attendance on a number of major projects for the Corps of Engineers, the last of which in the, in the period of 18, uh, uh, 18, 19, and 20, he was working to restore the forts over near uh, New, New Orleans. And when it was announced that they were going to build a Navy Yard at Pensacola, Colonel Chase, or then Captain Chase, was chosen to be the engineer in charge of construction. And he arrived here in 1828 with the plans for Fort Pickens, Fort McRae, Fort Barrancas, and the Redoubt, and all of the specifications that were supposed to go into them. And he arrived, and of course the first thing Colonel Chase had to do, or Captain Chase had to do, was, was to organize raw materials. And he, he went, he made a, he, well, we, we, he did what anyone normally would do, did a survey of what was available. And yes, we had one or two small brick yards, and yes, there were one or two small lumber yards, and there were some, uh, some brick uh, uh, production in Mobile. But uh, the captain recognized there were nothing near what was needed for this, these tremendous programs. And so he, he literally did the smart thing. He went up and down the Escambia River, and he located sites where there was clay that was suitable for brick making. And then he went to various men who were men of means and had capital to invest. And the, he, all together, he approached eight of these men. And these men, they agreed to accept his contract, which basically, in which he, he basically said to them this, if you will invest your capital and build a suitable brickyard, then I will assure you that you will have the purchase by my project, purchase of your total production for a minimum of 15 years, and it will probably go beyond that because I believe I will be also be involved in the construction of other forts downstate. Well, these eight men, of course, picked up the, the, the cudgel. They agreed to do this, and their brick yards were created up and down the river. At, uh, this is basically around where Molina, Molina and, uh, and Barth and so forth are. And they, they went to work and produced huge, huge numbers of brick. And this, he did the same thing with men who had the capital and the skills for lumbering. And as a consequence, they were able to, to put together lumber or timber cutting ar arrangements and lumber production. And all of this, of course, had to travel by water from the mainland out to, uh, to Fort, the first one, first site, of course, was to be Fort Pickens. And to do this, uh, Chase arranged for the construction of small barges, which would hold these, uh, these products. And also they, had, they brought in a small steam tug, which would be able to hold, literally pull the pull the, uh, the barges from their, uh, bill, their, their loading sites uh, into the bay and out, of course, to the end of, Fort, of uh, Santa Rosa Island. And this he did most successfully. And, of course, the first, uh, first uh, building of, uh, of a fort began in 1829, and this was Pickens, and it took 20 million of those brick to build that fort. It took another 10 million to put together Fort McRae, and, of course, he went on with that, with the construction in, with Barrancas and the Redoubt. And the last of these uh, construction jobs ended almost, almost on the 1st of January, 1850. So it was a long, long process. And of course, to, uh, to do the, the work on this, uh, on these, all of these forts, uh, Jackson uh, did not use local labor very much. Instead, he engaged, or he, I guess we, the right word, he leased uh, slaves that were owned by other fellow army officers. And these are, were men who had been purchased and, and especially trained in the building, uh, building uh, uh, construction trades. And these men were leased. They were brought to Pensacola. They stayed in what we would today call uh, 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 barracks uh, right adjacent to the sun. And some of those men, uh, they tell me, were arrived here with the, the first construction, 1829, and they were they were growing to be old men by the time the last of the construction ended. Well, Ch Chase was, of course, a, a an army engineer. He was a fort builder. But he was also a, a visionary. He was a realist, recognized that one of the things that Pensacola needed, if it was going to go uh, become anything except an outpost, it was a railroad. Because by the time we get into the early 1830s, the, the whole country was absorbed in railroad fever. And Pensacola, of course, which was literally at the end of the line, we had no uh, direct routes, so we had no road, we had no, no uh, steamship lines or, or shipping lines anywhere that were, were regular. And so Chase was one of those who helped to organize a a bank 
which in turn was the, the conduit to sell bonds to build a railroad. And Chase became the president of the Alabama, Florida, Florida and Georgia Railroad, which began construction here in 1836. Well, that probably would have been his one of his first great successes, except the Panic of 1837 descended on the whole country. Uh, the, most of the, uh, of the banks that were involved in this kind of thing went bankrupt. The railroad went bankrupt, and it was closed down. And it would not restart again until the, uh, until the end of the 1850s. Meanwhile, as we move through the, the cycle of his career here, Jack, uh, uh, Chase became uh, well acquainted with the political structure, first of all, in territorial government, and then af after we became a state in 1845. And he was, he was very active then with the with the uh, the people who were who were in charge of our of our state as we were approaching the terrible time which uh, when war seemed to be inevitable and so early in the eight in the mid oh shoot in a mid in, in the 1850s Jackson uh, chase became involved in two projects number one he was while he was still on active duty he became the president of another railroad this one was to be called to be called the Alabama and Florida Railroad and it was to be built between the docks at Pensacola north to a point just to the east of present-day Flomaton, a, a, a town which was then called Pollard, and this, the Alabama, Florida, was supposed to join up with the, a, the beginnings of the Louisville and Nashville, which was being built from the, from the, to the west uh, on a diagonal up toward Richmond and Washington. So Chase became the president of that railroad, and actual construction was underway by 1856. Uh, within a few months, of course, the, the, the war clouds were gathering, and the, uh, the uh, new governor of uh, Florida, a man named Madison Perry, recognized that there might be trouble coming. And so, for the first time, Florida was to create a militia. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Perry asked Mr. Uh, Mr. Chase, who was just about then to, to retire from his military career, if he would take on the role of colonel of the militia for this part of Florida, and uh, Chase agreed that he would do so. So beginning in 1858, the militia was uh, taking form, not in, in a big way, but nonetheless, he, he, the Chase was identifying where these men could, uh, could come from so that he could call them to, to arms when needed, and indeed that's what he did. The Alabama-Florida Railroad proceeded very well. Well, and so by the time we get to 1860, it was all but finished, and Mr. Chase is standing by, uh, watching the, the pushing the railroad forward because, in his eyes, and of course, uh, people all across the South recognized how important that railroad could be. Because you have to visualize it this way. The, uh, the, the, the port of Pensacola, the harbor, was, a, of course, a, a, just as beautiful and functional then as it is today. We had a, 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 a pier, a, dock, a dockage here at the, at the foot of Palafox Street, and the idea was that if we had a harbor, if we had dockage, and if we also could put the railroad in, in, in place and draw products coming in, then Pensacola might be the primary entry port for war materials and other goods if if a war should begin, because people were realistic, they recognized that if, if a war should begin, the South would have very little naval force to begin with, and of course the, the, for the, the Federal Navy would be able to blockade all of the eastern ports, so Pensacola became a, a very vital peg in all of this, and Chase was pushing his railroad as fast as he could. We reached uh, the, the fall of uh, 1860, and of course the election of Mr. Abraham Lincoln pretty much set things in motion. And as this happened, uh, when Mr. Lincoln was elected, the, uh, the governor uh, uh, called upon Mr. Chase now to activate your militia and have them in readiness uh, right after the 1st of uh, January, 1861. I am, because I am, I, the governor, am going to call the uh, legislature together and ask them to pass a, an act of secession. So Mr began that. Meanwhile, he had continued to push the construction, of course, on the railroad, which was almost complete. Okay, comes January of 1861, the legislature does con come together in, uh, in Tallahassee, and over a period of about nine days, they, they debate the uh, order of secession and finally agree that Florida will withdraw and become the third state to do so. Meanwhile, the governor orders Mr. Chase 
Call your militia to action. And Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chase does this. The uh, the uh, gentlemen, the the men coming off of the farms from all over the area here come together and they begin drilling here about the 8th or 9th of uh, January uh, with encampments in, in Seville Square and also in Ferdinand Plaza, putting together a force which, upon order, would then march to, to command to capture Fort Pickens, Fort McRae, Fort Barrancas, and the Navy Yard. And so all of this is taking place with Jackson excuse me, with Chase right in the middle of the story. And, and Mr. Chase, of course, uh, is, is, a, is as busy a man as you can imagine, because meanwhile, he's still pushing that railroad project. It is still about four months from actual completion. All right, we come to the, to the, uh, to the order of the, of the day. The, the Florida uh, legislature orders that uh, secession is now to take place. And Mr. Mr. Chase, Colonel Chase now, orders his men to, order, to, to arms. And there's, there's one story, and I, I, I believe it's true because it is recorded in a, a number of the, uh, the journals of the time, that as Mr. Chase gets his people in, in drill, gets them formed into what is a semblance of a military organization, about 20 of these young men who don't care for drilling and who, uh, who think that they could uh, probably overwhelm the world, realize that there are only about 65 federal troops commanding uh, in, in place in Fort, uh, in Fort Barrancas. Fort Pickens is empty, Fort, McRae, uh, Fort uh, McRae has no defenders. So uh, on, the, on the 11th day of, uh, of January, uh, uh, these 20 men on their own uh, take their muck, muskets and some torches and they, they march out of camp at, uh, at late, early in the evening and they march all the way to Fort Barrancas where they, they, they announce to the, the corporal of the guard on the, on the uh, rampart there at the fort that they have come to take over the fort. Well, there's a brief exchange. Uh, we don't know who did it, but one of those 20 boys discharged a musket after which the, uh, the Federals returned fire by firing well over the heads of these 20 boys who, who then took off and left. But the, uh, the point was that we can always say that those first shots of the war between the states took place here on that particular moment. The next morning, Mr. Chase took to, uh, to, went to work and uh, put together the uh, the uh, full complement of his militia. They marched forward and w without with no opposition at all, they captured the, the, the Navy Yard. Captain uh, Armstrong, who was in charge there, had no plan for defense, and consequently, the, the takeover was peaceful and quick. Uh, quickly, uh, Mr. Chase found out, of course, but overnight, uh, the lieutenant in charge at uh, Fort Barrancas had transferred his 65 men out of that fort, rode them across the Narrows, and had put them in Fort Pickens. So now, uh, with the capture of the Navy Yard, Mr. Chase quickly discovered he was in command of all of the, all of the forts except Fort Pickens, and he quickly had himself rode across and had a confrontation with young Lieutenant Slemmer, who was in, in charge of the, of the federal forces. But uh, Mr. Chase uh, refused, wisely, I guess, I suppose that's the right word, to, word, uh, term to use, did not risk taking an overt action to attack that fort. And as a result of that, uh, when, all, when, the day, when the dust had cleared and the day was ended, uh, Mr. Chase and the, uh, the new force of the, uh, of the South controlled the, all of the elements of defense here except Fort Pickens, and of course, that would prove to be critical. Well, meanwhile, Mr. Mr. Chase, in his engineering role for the railroad, quickly pushed it forward. They completed the, the routing uh, all the way to, uh, to Flomaton Junction, to, uh, to uh, yes, to, to uh, Pollard Junction, and the railroad was complete and would be in use by the South for the next year. Concluding our story of Mr. Chase, we have to add that he was also a real estate developer. He, in the course of the, his time in the 1830s, he had dreams of a great new uh, residential community in what, basically what is today East Pensacola Heights, and lots of uh, uh, promotion was done on this. Unfortunately for him, uh, that was all, all tied in with the early railroad, and it came to nothing. Mr. Ch Mr. Chase was a, a, one of the early vestrymen in uh, Old Christ Church when that church was opened in 1832, and he, oh, throughout his life, he served served so many other worthy projects within the community. Mr. Chase lived on to the early part of the 1870s. His home, which was a very beautiful affair at the corner of Wright and Palafox Street, uh, became a hotel after his death. And so we have, we named uh, the, the city council of a later date, named a, a street for Mr. Chase downtown. So when you cross Chase Street, you recognize that it was named for one of the true pioneer leaders of our Pensacola community.